This city is better off now because of my leadership. The city paper once called him D.C.'s mayor for life, and in many ways it was true. Even when he did not hold the actual office, he dominated the city's attention as no other figure. Marion Barry moved to D.C. from his hometown of Memphis in the 1960s. He had been a civil rights activist, a member of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, college kids who sat in at lunch counters to protest policies that refused to serve blacks, and occasionally they were attacked by angry whites and arrested. Barry called it public service. I spent over 30 years of my life since 1960, given it to the public uh, in the civil rights movement, uh, arrested some two or three dozen times. In this. After the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968 and the massive riots in Washington, Barry emerged here as a high-profile community activist running a black self-help group called Pride Incorporated. From there, he was elected to a less than satisfying school board post. Because they're reactionary, and you have to just try to figure out how you get some power in this town. Barry was next elected to city council, and an incident in 1977 rocketed him to prominence. A radical group called the Hanafi Muslims took over the district building, D.C. City Hall, and in the chaos, they shot then at-large council member Marion Barry and news reporter Maurice Williams, who was killed. The city negotiated an end to the takeovers, and Barry survived. Well, I wish it had to rain on our parade, but uh, on the other hand, that's good luck. The following year, Barry was elected mayor of Washington, D.C. He pulled an upset and would remain mayor for 16 of the next 20 years. The early Barry years were marked as a time of progress for D.C. black business that saw its share of city contracts soar from single digits to more than a third. He guaranteed all D.C. youths who wanted them summer jobs. But by Barry's third term, his administration suffered from daily news stories about his rumored drug use with a woman named Karen Johnson and with a drug dealer named Charles Lewis. Barry denied it all. The mayor's word in a situation ought to at least be a little bit higher than a, that of a convicted drug dealer or, or a prostitute. Then in January 1990, in a video seen around the world, Barry smoked crack cocaine in an FBI sting where they used an old girlfriend, Rashida Moore, and arrested the mayor on drug charges. The next day, a wild scene in front of U.S. District Court as the mayor of the nation's capital, his wife Effie at his side, arrived for arraignment on misdemeanor charges of possession of crack cocaine. He was ultimately convicted of one misdemeanor and sentenced to six months in prison. He turned over the reins of government to newly elected Mayor Sharon Pratt Kelly and was off to serve his prison sentence. Five months after he got out of prison, he was back on the campaign trail, defeating Wilhelmina Rolark as Ward 8 council member. You can come back. It's not that you get knocked down, not that you fall down or get kicked down, that you get up. That's important. Two years after that, he was campaigning for his old job as D.C. mayor. And yes, he was elected once again. Striking was how he was loved in much of the black community. I love my brother. He did a lot for us black people, and I will always vote for him. Also striking how he was loathed among whites, where his approval rating was 5%. I've hated him since the 80s, so that opinion has not changed. Back in office, Barry's response to whites being upset by his re-election. Get over whatever personal hang-ups you got. <laughs> Get over it. But it was Barry who got the worst of it the second time around. Kelly handed Barry back a city that was flat broke. Congress appointed a control board to run D.C. with Barry as mere figurehead. The man Barry appointed as his chief financial officer, Anthony Williams, publicly turned on Barry. I'm hard-pressed, quite frankly, to see how this job can be done without the support of the administration. The control no board backed Williams, and Williams eventually got himself elected mayor, and at that moment, the control board gave back control of the city to the mayor's office. The control board chairman, Andrew Brimmer. We will have a new mayor. Out of office once again, Barry would make a try for an at-large council seat of Phil Mendelson. Then in a traffic stop, Park Police said he had cocaine around his nose. Barry dropped out. Then back to Ward 8, where he defeated the incumbent, Sandy Allen, and returned to the council. A bumpy ride after a guilty plea on tax evasion charges, a drug test revealed cocaine turned up in his system at age 70, and he was back under the authority of the court. His domestic life was bumpy as well. A divorce from his wife Effie, he married Cora Mastersberry for his second stint as mayor, then later they separated. He was again making appearances with Effie, and at the death of Effie in September of 2007 of leukemia, he was there as part of the family, 
listening to son Christopher describe his mother. They say she was like, uh, like a Jackie Kennedy, but that's, that's not, no, I don't think that describes her. A woman like that only comes every few thousand years. She was like a, a, a Nefertiti or Cleopatra. Barry and son walked down from the pulpit at the National Cathedral arm in arm. He was loved by many, hated by many, but he will be remembered by all. I'm Sam Ford, ABC 7 News.